Hello lovely people and welcome to my kitchen laboratory. Today I will be explaining to you how I do the impulse response measurements for testing different damping factors of amplifiers. So I think first order of business is to explain to you what is connected where and how everything works. This is just my lithium battery. It's showing 13.1 volts. This is my amplifier that I'm currently testing. And these for now is only three speakers. So I have these subwoofers, which is the earthquake that I mentioned before, very soft suspension, old school subwoofer. And this is almost complete opposite, very stiff suspension, Alpine status HDZ110. And this one is just a Vistatone 8 inch full range driver. Yeah, just like that. So at the moment, I'm testing only these three because I have them on hand. I need to remove any speakers from anywhere else. So for now, only these. So what's happening here? I'm using Focusrite Scarlett because I need a very high sample rate. The UMIC is limited to 48K and this can run at 192. So I'm running at 192 so I could get the most samples as I can. Now, I'm using two programs for this. I'm using REW for the generator and I'm using Audacity to record whatever is coming from the subwoofer with this XLR microphone. So REW has a thing which has loads of different tones and everything. And what it has is a tone burst. So this tone burst is literally, you can choose how many cycles you want a little short burst. So I chose a frequency of 40 Hertz because for this is something close to FS for all of these drivers. And it's the same frequency like lower bass. So I can have a bit more excursion because if I'm gonna choose like a thousand Hertz, uh, these literally don't move at all. It's like no X max. So the mic is not gonna pick it up properly. So I chose 40 Hertz. Uh, I'm not clipping it signal or anything and I can choose the cycles. So the cycles I can choose all the way from half a cycle, which is just a little bump. So this, when you play it, the cone just moves up and down and that's it. It doesn't go inwards. When I choose a full cycle, just like that, the cone goes up, it moves down, and then it settles. So like a full sine wave. And I chose to do measurements with half a cycle, one cycle, one and a half cycles, and two cycles. And then basically I record it with Audacity on 192K. So I'll have the most resolution as I can for my recording. So let me demonstrate. This is not gonna be how I do the measurements, but it's just for you to demonstrate. So I'm gonna play this. So this now is two cycles. And basically in two cycles, what's happening, this cone moves two times in and out. And the microphone picks that up. If I'm gonna hit record in Audacity here, I'm just gonna stop it for now. And I'm gonna stop this tone. And here you have, so on one, on channel one, which is this one, I connected the microphone. So it picks up what's coming out of the subwoofer or the speaker. And on channel two, I hooked it up directly to the amplifier outputs, so I'm measuring the electrical signal. So basically this is the perfect theoretical signal, digital, that is fed into the amplifier. This is what's coming out of the amplifier. So you can see we have one, two, three, four, and a little bit of overshoot. So this is a combination of both the Focusrite DAC and the amplifier because the digital conversion, this conversion into analog it happens here and then that signal is fed into the amplifier. So this signal, I cannot say that it's only amplifier, it's combination of both of these things. And this on top, you can see this is the signal that's coming out of the actual subwoofer. So for example, if I'm gonna do just half a cycle, just for you to show, bup, bup. I'm gonna start recording. Stop it and stop this. And I'll just need to go back. There you go. So you can see this is just half a cycle. This is what's coming out of the amplifier. 
and this is what's coming out of the subwoofer. Now, as I mentioned, I found three different amplifiers in the last video, which was this one that has the highest damping factor, another two, class AB, that have lower damping factor, and I have three different speakers. So I will have nine different measurements, basically three amplifiers, three speakers, three times three, nine. Now, if I'm going to find, because I haven't looked, looked at the results yet, I have all these files here. If I'm not going to find any differences between these two, in my opinion, it's pointless to test mid-ranges and tweeters because I'm not going to pick up anything. If the subwoofers with long throw are not going to show anything between the amplifiers, the tweeters and mid-ranges are not going to show it as well. So one thing to note, I'm keeping the same voltage between um, these three drivers. So not the same, but between the amplifiers. So this one, I'm trying to drive with three volts because you cannot drive all of them with the same voltage and expect the same excursion. So this one, three volts, this one, five volts, and this one needs seven volts. And this is just in order to keep the cone moving up and down quite a lot to have some X max because I'm, I'm going to choose one volt. Obviously, this is going to move more and this is not going to move at all. So it's not like totally calibrated. It's not extremely, extremely scientific, but I think it's Fair. So now I'm done with all the measurements and we're going to jump into the laptop and we're going to see if there is any differences. Now, what I would like you to do now is stop the video, go into the comments and post what you think. Will we see differences between all of these or everything is going to look the same? I will be reading that comment section because I'm really interested. How do you think? So I want to show you just uh, one measurement, how they look like, and then we're going to see the, all the conclusions. So I'm going to choose just random in the middle, this one. I'm just going to do this. And here I have what I did. I did three clicks with half a wave, another three with one full wave, another three, one and a half wave and two wave, just to see if there's any literally difference. So let's have a look at one and just, just to have a look how it looks like. So this is, as I mentioned, the signal that's coming from the amplifier. This is half a wave. It just goes up and down. It does overshoot a little bit, but it is what it is. And this is the response of the subwoofer that's measured by the amplifier. You can see that when the amplifier starts here, there is a little, little delay. But then when the amplifier signal rises, this is rising as well. However, it's lagging behind because obviously electrical signal is much faster than a physical moving cone. Then when it reaches the top, uh, the signal kind of tries to fall down and the cone tries to fall down as well. And here the signal ends. And the cone is, suppo is supposed to be like in the rest position, but the cone is, since it has inertia, it goes all the way down. And then you can see here, after a little delay, there is like a much steeper slope to this one. So this is basically a cone in kind of free fall when this is the section where the amplifier, amplifier's damping factor tries to put the cone back into rest position. So this is just a half a cycle. If I'm gonna move to the very back, where you have two full cycles and the situation is kind of the same. So you start, it kind of lags behind and you can see it's kind of shifted just because the physical subwoofer is lacking behind. So these are the measurements that are we working with. So now what I'm gonna show you is this. So this is, uh, I arranged all of these screenshots because of what I did, I just literally did screenshots and we're gonna be visually comparing uh, different responses. So these are screenshots that show how different subwoofers behave on the same amplifier. So for example, this is the F240 amplifier. And here you have the earthquake subwoofer. Then I'm gonna switch to HDZ, which is Alpine and then Visaton. So I'm just gonna go back and forth between these three. So you can see that the response, it is slightly different. However, uh, we don't see any difference in the length 
of the signal kind of they're kind of the same so the differences that you can see in amplitude and slightly width is just because the gain the analog gain on the focus right i couldn't match it perfectly perfectly that's why some responses are slightly bigger than others but yeah there is a difference we can see that the earthquake it's more wiggly it's not as straight in the peaks the hdz is totally smooth this is a heavy cone with a lot of motor force uh, and the earthquake is quite opposite and we have a similar situation with the visaton driver as well uh, very wiggly not really straight the biggest difference is if we're gonna go to the full two cycles so this is the earthquake so mainly we're going to be looking at the top graph because the bottom one is the same uh, so this is the earthquake, then we have HDZ, which between these two is very similar. We can see that, yeah, it's very, very similar. The only difference is that earthquake, like in the very beginning has wiggles, in the very end wiggles, but the response is almost identical. And the Saturn is a bit weird because it has this, I don't know what this is and it is a bit wiggly as well but i think the order of these graphs is not correct so the the better way to watch these graphs is depending on the amplifier so here we have same driver on three amplifiers same driver on three amplifiers and this is basically will show us if there's any difference between the different damping factors so this is the earthquake driver just uh, have a sine wave on uh, you can see here on the top f240 then we're going to switch to f409 and type x again between these three there is literally zero difference the only difference we can see here a slightly different but this is again could be due to the gain but there's literally zero difference so this is earthquake then hdz alpine so one amplifier, second amplifier, third amplifier, zero difference. Again, the only difference you see is the amplitude, but this is just analog gain that is not matched between these two measurements. But we can see that the measurement ends here on all of them. So this one, it looks like the measurement ends a bit further, but it starts further as well. Because again, I didn't capture these screenshots perfectly perfectly exactly the same but there's literally no, no difference the saturn driver uh the only difference with the saturn driver what i noticed is that so if you have a look at the second this second peak on the f409 it's smooth on the 240 is wiggly and on the x x type the class d amplify it's wiggly as well so this is the, literally the only difference that I saw. But the impulse length is exactly the same no matter what. If we're going to have a look at the longest impulse, which is the two full wavelengths. So this is uh, lowest damping factor, middle damping factor, highest damping factor. Literally zero difference. This is the Visaton driver. Now let's have a look. This is the Alpine HDZ. You can see zero difference absolutely no difference and let's have a look at earthquake back and forth between these three amplifiers zero difference yeah the only now i can see here this one the earthquake on the class d amplifier this one is a little bit wiggly but again the impulse length is exactly the same is identical and all of these measurements uh, if you want i can upload them you can have a look by yourselves but yeah this visaton as i mentioned on this one on f409 it is slightly smoother but the impulse length is exactly the same and i did read the comments that people posted on facebook when i did the post about this and everybody said that the damping factor above 20 above 50 or especially above 100 absolutely doesn't matter and based on this 
it is true my measurements didn't show any variation so we can see i have a lot of them but all of them literally identical there is no variation between these three amplifiers whatsoever the conclusion that i can make is that it's not definite that the damping factor doesn't affect anything but based on my measurements based on the amplifiers that i have and the drivers that i tested uh, the damping factor at least above 100 doesn't matter at all. No matter what speaker you're using, the damping factor doesn't mean anything. Probably if you would have like class A amplifiers, the tube amplifiers that have super, super low damping factors of like, I don't know, 10 or less, maybe then there would be a difference. But with these, especially car audio amplifiers, I don't know, I haven't seen a car audio amplifier that would have an amping factor of, I don't know, less than 50. That's super rare. And even the Alpines that I have that are more than 10, 15 years old, those have damping factors of over 200. And especially all the Class D that I have, they're super, super high damping factor. Let me show you uh, this one. So these are the output impedance graphs that I did. You can see the MRX. It's super, super low. So this one measured a damping factor of a thousand. And then it goes kind of into negative damping factor, which is, it is a thing apparently. Uh, then this one is the worst. You can see 0 0.4 and more. And I have all of others that I measured. And I'm just going to show you this one very quickly. There we go. So these are my amplifiers that I currently have. And this is the damping factor. This is the output impedance. And this is damping factor calculated based into a 4 and a 2 ohm load. So into 4 ohm, you can see that the class D, the old MRX F65, has a damping factor of 2000. Then this is the lowest one, which is like 100. And then this is, again, one of the oldest amplifiers that I have, 200, 300, 2, the class D, 400 and 800. And these are ABs as well, two, four, two. So basically, with all of these amplifiers, the damping factor is so high that the driver's response, uh, there's no difference. You saw yourself. There's literally zero difference between any of these amplifiers and any of these drivers. So based on this, I think it would be very pointless to test mid ranges and tweeters because if we didn't see anything on subwoofers that have very, very high throw, very high X max, with low X max drivers, uh, there's definitely not going to be any difference. So, in a way, it is kind of a bit disappointing that I didn't see any differences because I was hoping that I'm going to see something. But we still learned something. We learned that high damping factor doesn't affect anything so when you're choosing your amplifiers seriously guys don't look at the damping factor and just grab the one that has the most power and is the cleanest in general so that's it thank you very much for watching guys and i will see you in the next one